All right, so I hope you'll uh, bear with me. I will show you uh, a little clip from the film shortly, but I first wanted to just say a few words about um, independent living and really kind of the journey that's taken me to actually making this film. Um, oh, before I start, I'd also like to say that I was lucky enough last year to be able to come up and uh, come to the conference and hear uh, a presentation by uh, Mayo Marriott on uh, independent living and uh, his kind of mission to help people realize their potential. Uh, very tragically, he passed away this year. So I'd like to send my uh, thoughts and condolences out to his friends and family. Um, he had Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I thought when I met him that it was such a shame I hadn't met him before I started to make the film because he would have been a wonderful subject uh, for the film itself. But I think the best way that I can really pay respect to him is by continuing to promote his message of positivity and about people being able to realize their potential. So I'll say a little bit about how I tried to do that in my own life. And really one way is uh, by using my own experiences of living with Duchenne to try and improve services um, for other people. And that comes from my almost 25 years of involvement with that MDC. And in fact, even before it was the MD campaign, when it was the Muscle Dystrophy Group. I do remember when I was younger with my parents, sometimes sitting out outside a supermarket for four hours with a collection tin, uh, raising money for muscular dystrophy. So I've been involved for quite some time now. And more recently, it's about using my experiences of becoming an adult with Duchenne and uh, things like going to university and uh, getting into work and living independently my own experiences to try and improve things for others. Okay, can we have the next slide? So a little bit about me. Um, I come from Shoreham in West Sussex, although I uh, grew up in Worthing. Uh, I have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I'm 31 at the moment, and uh, for those of you interested in the more technical aspects of Duchenne, I have uh, my genetic mutation is a duplication of exon 2. Um, I have a PhD in government um, and spent over eight years at the University of Essex um, to get that. And uh, I'm a member of the MTC Trailblazers group and also uh, the Southeast Muscle Network as well. Trustee of Action Duchenne. Um, I own work as a research officer at the, the Brighton Centre for Independent Living, and I'm also producer of the documentary. So one of my biggest personal campaigns that I used to kind of try and uh, move, move things on for others as well is my campaign for 24-hour care. Now, this uh, happened almost a couple of years ago now, um, with the big battle that I had to try and get 24-hour uh, care from personal assistance. When I went to university, I was supported by volunteers, which had worked very well up till then. But as my needs increased, I really needed support from paid staff who were a little more experienced and uh, could give me the help that I needed. However, I fa faced a very big battle with my local social services to actually get the support. I needed, which uh, could only really be challenged by me going uh, onto local media. And so this picture here is from an article on ITV News where we actually found another member of the Trailblazers Network, uh, Mike Morwood, who received over double the funding that I did from social services. And we had very similar levels of need so it really was using that case to try and show to, well, social services the kind of disparity of treatment that I was receiving 
Fortunately, this article actually came, resulted in the NHS coming forward to offer some more funding towards my care package. And so it was a, a very good example of a success that can come through uh, a campaign like this. And uh, it's only since I had this support that I've been able to move out to live on, in my own place, which is uh, a great result. Next slide. I had another big campaign uh, for a cough assist machine. Unfortunately, this one wasn't quite so successful and remains uh, something that I'm currently fighting for. Although with the recent changes to the NHS, I'm waiting for things to settle down again before I start taking it up again. But I received um, support from the, the MD advocacy service and uh, that was very useful actually to try and push the issue. But uh, as I said, it remains one to be solved at the moment. The uh, issue was that my local PC team refused to provide the cough assist machine that I needed as they didn't feel that the uh, efficacy of the machine had been proven, which uh, if anyone has actually used them uh, is complete rubbish because they are really a lifeline for people and uh, are fantastically effective. Okay. So I use these experiences from my personal campaigns to try and help how I can contribute to other people's experiences. And one key way is through trailblazers, where I can use my own individual experiences with the experiences of others so that we can produce uh, comprehensive reports which actually use all of this body of evidence to try and bring about change. And uh, we've got a presentation from trailblazers next, I think, so. Uh, it can go into a bit more detail on that, but uh, I find it really personally very, uh, a very useful campaign. It's very effective and it gives me, it makes me feel that my negative experiences can actually be turned into something positive, which I think is uh, really so important. So my work uh, is another way in which I try to use my own experiences. And the Fed Centre for Independent Living is a, it's a local organisation to Brighton, but it supports people to live independently. And the area of the uh, charity that I work for really focuses on using people's experiences and using involvement in various meetings and focus groups to actually bring together evidence of people's problems that they faced, take them to service providers. So the local council and NHS to actually push for improving services and uh, we have made quite a few successes over the years and it's really quite a positive project to be involved in. The most recent piece of work I did for the Fed was running a research project which ran interviews and focus groups with 75 disabled people and looked at all the kind of public services that they use and the needs that they had. And from that, we've developed an action plan uh, in conjunction with some of the local councillors and NHS uh, officials on how we can take forward some of the issues. So that's been a really uh, great thing for me to see, actually being able to conduct this research and then take it forward to actually bring about some results. Okay. So yeah, there's all those elements of how I try to use my own experiences and bring that into campaigns. But I think a key thing about independent living is that you shouldn't really get too focused on getting there and the actual processes of doing it and lose sight of the fact that you have actually achieved this uh, wonderful thing of independent living and the, the key thing is to make the most of it and really make it worth it. And I think the way I try to do that is uh, by getting out there as much as I can, by spreading the word about independent living and also Duchenne, and really just kind of giving myself every opportunity I can to become a useful and productive member of society and have a bit of fun on the way. 
Uh, this is some pictures for me up in the, uh, the top left is me in Times Square, New York, um, where I went with uh, a BA and also my dad came along with, with me on that trip. So that was really, uh, that, that, that was a really great experience for me because I haven't been able to fly for various reasons, but I don't think I would be very comfortable in an airline seat. Um, and also issues with transporting my wheelchair. It's been a big issue for trailblazers as well recently. Um, but what I actually did to get to New York was I sailed over on the Queen Mary 2 and back again, which is certainly a once in a lifetime trip. Could never afford to do that a second time. But it was a really fantastic experience for me and I never thought I would be there. And then we have other uh, pictures from me in the rain showing my dedication to visiting the Red Hot Chili Peppers concert. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's not all, not all fun and games necessarily, but uh, it's about getting out there and uh, I, I do struggle when I'm outside actually with the, uh, being in uh, wet weather particularly, getting very cold and uh, having problems with my uh, muscles kind of seizing up and not being able to move very well. So there I have, I think, two blankets on, three jumpers, a hot water bottle somewhere in there, hand warmers, and an umbrella. So quite a, quite a mission to actually keep me warm. But uh, it did mean I could actually get out there and enjoy it. Then there's another picture, and that's me uh, in Brighton, just uh, enjoying the sunshine and uh, looking out on the sea. I quite like that picture. So this brings us on to the film that I've made, which I like to call my baby. Uh, it's called A Life Worth Living, Living Pushing the Limits of Duchenne. Now just uh, down there you can see some of the sponsors that we've had for actually making the film. Uh, the big one was Fiat who gave us £5,000 to actually make the film and that's because mm. I approached them because the vehicle I use throughout the film is a Fiat. Um, and also one of the people that I visit also has a, a Fiat vehicle, so uh, there's certainly a lot of product placement in there, so I thought I'd use that to try and appeal to them to give us some money, and, and it worked quite well, which I did with a number of other charities as well, with ETAC who produced my wheelchair, Brotherwood who adapted the car, and then the camper van company, because we use camper vans for the crew of the film. And then last but certainly not least, I had support from both the, the MD campaign Trailblazers and also Action Duchenne to make this film. So it was, certainly was a joint effort. So the next slide is going to be my video, hopefully, if we can work out the technical aspects. And this is just a short version of the film, six minutes, and I will leave it to speak for itself. I am John Easley. I'm 30 years old and I'm on borrowed time. I have Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which has left me almost paralysed and restricts my breathing, and it continues to progress. I might have 10 years left, I might only have one, but I'm going to make my life mean something. Last August, I posted a video telling you about my plans to travel around the UK, meeting other adults with Duchenne who've achieved some remarkable things. Seven months later, that crazy idea has become a reality. Six guys in six locations across the UK and Europe have responded to my call and agreed to meet with me and share their story. So this is it. I embark on the most ambitious journey of my life. This time, I'm telling a story. 
a story about people determined to live, not to survive. This is a journey of deep personal significance to me because I wanted to deliver a message to a new generation of Duchennes. I want to inspire people to push the limits just as other people inspired me when I was younger. My name is Karen. We are going to die for the show. What would you have to say? It's more something you're going to do. Even if you don't feel like going out and being sociable or whatever, you've just got to, you know, force yourself to get up and out. Alright. So at the moment, when you go out, do you have to go out with your mum and dad? I like meet a girl, like you fancy. Yeah. And you ask about the day. Then you've got to get out with you, isn't it? <laughs> same right, is it? Our mindset is the same as everyone else. But our bodies are. Mesh, what on earth have you got planned? I hope you like the surprise. <laughs> Certainly surprising. What do you find the hardest about living with Dusha? You know, you've gone through something and then you like just have to accept that. I wish it was easier for you to get the same milk that I do. You should be entitled to live independently as, as I am. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Come again, huh? Duchenne is a genetic condition, so it's an inherited condition, or it's a condition which starts for the first time with a fault in the person who's got it. And it causes progressive loss of muscle because a protein that the muscle needs to protect itself, called dystrophin, is missing. wanted to give them a hug. I couldn't even do that. People can live longer and they can have meaningful lives, but it doesn't stop douching. It's sucky. So, Joy, what do you think the future holds for um, douching guys like us? I don't know exactly what the last stages of Duchenne are going to be like. No, I'm not, I'm not very sure of myself. Eh? I mean, I know most people die when they get chest yeah. infections, but I don't know, is it peaceful yes, or is it is, uh, you dying, gasping for breath at the end? I, I really hope not. I think life is so important. As long as you can communicate, I think it's just so important to keep going, really. And why you would laugh? <coughs> It's such a good emotion. Yeah. To feel love. And to give love to him. When you want to help. So well, that's the best one. One thing that's really important is that we show the difficulties involved with Duchenne, as well as the positive bits. You know, I know I'm going to die earlier than yeah, you know, your average person would go by average life expectancy. And I just, I don't want to have done nothing with my life and not be remembered after I'm gone as if I'd never existed. Um, I want in some way for my presence to have made a difference and to have changed something and not to just have meant nothing. Okay, so yes, the six minute short version of my film, but the whole thing is actually 93 minutes. It's a full feature film, and it should hopefully be on sale in the next few months. Um, we're just working out, negotiating the details of that.
but uh, certainly do come and contact me. I'll be here all, uh, all day if you want to find out more about the film. Uh, I'll give the web link as well at the end of the, the talk. But just to give you a bit more details about what the film is, it's basically a road movie. It's me traveling around the country and also into the Netherlands, meeting uh, seven other guys with uh, Duchenne. And I tried to pick people who I feel have uh, really achieved something in their lives to kind of give a message to people that having Duchenne doesn't mean that your life needs necessarily to be limited in what you can achieve. But it's also to raise kind of the awareness of the challenge of living with Duchenne into adulthood and to show that people are still living, well, living longer than <coughs> certainly they have in the past. And certainly some expectations are uh, for people these days. But obviously, people are still dying younger. It's more a message that there is hope and uh, people can live longer these days. So it's also to kind of raise awareness for the general population as well. Now the guys I visit, um, there's Stuart from Birmingham, who's written a World War II thriller. There's Carl in Manchester, who's done a lot of charity work and was Mancunian of the Year in 2010. And there's Ian in Wales, who's uh, a digital artist and has written a, a biography about his life as well. There's Mark Chapman in Edinburgh, who has done work as a graphic designer He's also very involved with the MDK, MD campaign up in Scotland as well. And there's Mahesh uh, in London, who's uh, involved with the Trailblazers, an avid fundraiser and campaigner. And then uh, John Linder in the Netherlands, who organizes rock and pop concerts and actually organized a rock concert in his garden uh, in honor of the film when I went to visit him. So that's quite great. That was quite uh, good fun. Okay, next. And just some pictures from the shoot. This is the crew. Uh, on the left is the director, Annie Perkins, who'd actually had no connection with uh, Duchenne before she made the film, and really brings a quite unique perspective to, to the whole thing. She's very dynamic, and uh, she's now determined to actually raise the awareness of Duchenne um, in her work and really kind of take the issues forward, even though she's completely new to it. She's really got on board with the whole, uh, the whole concept of the film and the work of the charities, and she's very eager to be more, more involved. Okay. There's some pictures from the shoot, me with Mark at the top, and then me visiting a family uh, with Jacob, who's only <coughs> six years old and uh, had received a diagnosis six months before we went to visit them. So that was quite, uh, quite a poignant moment in the movie. And that's me visiting Stuart as well at the bottom. And that's me with Mahesh in the top left, and then visiting Professor Kate Bushby, top right, going bowling with Carl in the bottom left, and then me visiting Ian uh, in his home where he was showing me uh, how he does his digital painting. Okay, so you can find out more about the film if you're interested by going to our website at a lifeworthlivingfilm.com or you can speak to me as, as I said, I'm here all day. Okay, well thank you very much for uh, listening to me and thank you for the privilege of being able to speak at the conference. Really appreciate it.